This is the first lesson in section 2 electromagnetism, chapter 3 electricity. After a short introduction, we will talk about four main points. Number one, three methods of magnetization. How we can change a normal piece of iron or steel into a magnet. The second main point contains three experiments to find the magnetic fields. Number three, we will draw three shapes of three different magnetic fields. And finally, we will learn three methods of how we can demagnetize a magnet and change it into a normal piece of iron or steel. Let's start with a short introduction. The first thing we have to know is that there is nothing special about the material of the magnet. It's not more than a piece of iron, with symbol Fe as in chemistry. But what gives it some special properties, like attracting other objects made of iron is, the arrangement of its ions, but the details of the inner structure of ions is not included in the syllabus. A magnet has the ability to attract other objects that are made of iron, steel, cobalt, and nickel. Magnetic materials. The magnetic materials are materials that are attracted to magnets and can be magnetized. Sometimes they are named ferrous substances. They are iron, steel, cobalt, and nickel. Magnetic poles. The poles are the extreme ends of the magnet. A magnet has two poles. One of them is the north pole with the letter N, and the other pole is the south pole with the letter S. They are the strongest parts of the magnet. The poles are the places in a magnet to which magnetic materials are attracted, like iron fillings. They are near the ends of a bar magnet and occur in pairs of equal strength. If a magnet is hanged freely, its north will point to the north of the earth and its south will point to the south of the earth. That is why a compass is made of a magnetic needle. Laws of the magnetic poles. Like poles are pill and unlike poles attract. If two like poles, for example two north poles or two south poles, become close to each other they will repel, but if they are of opposite type and are brought together, they will attract. The force between magnetic poles decreases as their separation increases. When a magnet is broken into pieces, each piece becomes a new magnet. After a short introduction, we will discuss three methods of magnetization. Magnetization is how to change a piece of iron or steel into a magnet. Number one, magnetization by induction. Number two, magnetization by stroking. Number three, electric DC magnetization. Let's start with number one, magnetization by induction. Chains of small iron nails and steel paper clips can be hung from a magnet. A nail or a clip normally is not a magnet. If you take a look on the first clip, it acquires the magnetic property by just touching the strong magnet. That is why it attracts the next one and so on. Acquiring the magnetic property by just touching a strong magnet is named magnetization by induction. Actually, no need to touch the magnet. All what you need is just to be in the magnetic field of the magnet and this will do the same. You also must know that, as we go further from the magnet, the magnetic property becomes weaker. Now it's time to compare between two magnetic materials, soft iron and steel. A strong magnet is shown. A soft iron rod is attracted to it. The soft iron rod will acquire the magnetic property with the shown polarity. The top of the rod which is directly in contact with the north of the strong magnet will be a south, and the lower end of the rod will be a north. This is to keep the rod attracted. Now the iron rod can attract iron fillings strongly. Also a steel rod will acquire the magnetic property with the same polarity as soft iron. But steel acquires weaker magnetism. But what happens after getting the strong magnet away from the two bars? After removing the strong magnet, Soft iron loses all the magnetic property. 
but still keeps its magnetic property. That's why we can say that soft iron is a soft magnetic substance, acquires magnetic property easily, and loses it easily. But steel is a hard magnetic substance. It acquires magnetic property hardly and loses it hardly. Because of these properties, soft iron is used in making electromagnets, while steel is used in making permanent magnets. The second method of magnetizing a steel rod is by stroking. This steel rod will be magnetized by stroking it with a strong magnet. Using one pole, rub the iron rod in one direction. Do not rub back and forth. The steel bar is stroked with the magnet by the same pole in the same direction. This will produce a magnet. The end of the rod where we start the stroking will be the same pole as the stroking pole. In this example, it will be a north, since the stroking was using a north pole. The pole produced at the beginning of the stroke is similar to the stroking pole. The other end of the rod will be opposite to the stroking rod. The third method of magnetization is using a DC current. A cardboard tube is shown. The cardboard is placed inside a solenoid of copper wire. Then we get an iron rod. The iron rod is placed inside the cardboard tube. Connect the wire to a DC battery or supply. Approach some iron fillings to the rod. Iron fillings will be attracted to the rod. Now this is an electromagnet. If the battery is removed, iron fillings will fall. The polarity of the magnet is given by a right hand grip rule. Right hand grip rule. When the right hand fingers turn in the direction of the current, the thumb will point to the north. Remember, it must be a right hand. If current is reversed, polarity of the magnet is also reversed. The strength of the electromagnet can be increased by some factors. Number one, larger value of the current. Number two, increasing number of turnings of the solenoid. Some important things we have to take care of. Notes. Note number one, turnings of the solenoid must not touch each other, so the wire must be insulated to avoid a short circuit. Number two, the wire must not touch the rod. Now we just finished three methods of magnetization, induction, stroking, and electric DC magnetization. Now it's time to talk about the magnetic field and three experiments to plot the magnetic field lines. To understand the concept of the magnetic field, let's first look at this strong magnet and these two steel spheres. Which one will attract to the magnet? Only the iron sphere that is close to the magnet is attracted. This is because the magnetic effect is limited by a certain space around the magnet. The space is named the magnetic field. It is discovered that the magnetic field is not a whole area. It is formed of specific well-arranged lines, depending on the shape of the magnet. The most common experiment to plot the shape of the magnetic field lines is the iron fillings method. Here we will plot the shape of the magnetic field of a bar magnet. Place a sheet of paper on the top of a bar magnet. Sprinkle iron fillings thinly and evenly on the top of the paper. Tap the paper gently with your finger and the fillings should form patterns of lines. These lines are the magnetic field lines or the magnetic flux lines of the magnet. The iron fillings align themselves on the magnetic field lines. This experiment does not only give the shape of the magnetic field, 
it also gives the direction. Place a strong bar magnet on top of a sheet of paper. Get a compass and place the compass next to the north pole of the strong magnet. The compass needle will have a direction according to the direction of the magnetic field of the magnet. In this place, get a pencil. Mark a dot where the compass points to. The dot must be on the north of the compass needle. After that, we will remove the compass from this place and place the compass next to the marked dot. We can use the same compass or get another compass. After that, repeat steps 3 and 4 until you reach the other pole by marking a dot and placing the compass next to the previous dot. As you can see, the dots form a uniform shape. Connect the dots you have drawn. Repeat the whole experiment for other lines. This experiment gives the shape and the direction of the magnetic field lines. Another experiment to show that the magnetic field of a magnet is a group of lines with specific directions is the floating magnet. Get a large dish and fill it with water. Get a light magnet, a piece of cork, and a strong magnet. Put the strong magnet on the top of the dish. Put the light magnet inside the cork as shown. Put the light magnet in the water so it is submerged and its north pole is near the north pole of the strong magnet to make them repel. And now let the light magnet to go and move freely. This is exactly what we will see. The floating magnet moves in a semicircular uniform path, repelled from the same pole, attracted to the opposite pole, following a certain magnetic field line. This shows that the light magnet is not repelled randomly, but it follows a certain path from north to south. This path is a magnetic field line or magnetic flux line. In this section, you will learn how to draw different shapes of magnetic fields. The first magnetic field is the magnetic field of the bar magnet. Draw a straight line out from the center of the north and another one from the south. Draw a curved line as shown to connect between the north and the south pole. Draw another one below the magnet. You can add more incomplete curved lines from both north and south poles, but make sure that the lines do not intersect. There is no problem to add other curves, and this will be enough. Since magnetic field or magnetic flux is a vector quantity, it has a direction, so the magnetic field lines must have arrows. The direction of the magnetic field lines are going out of the north and into the south, as shown by these arrows. The second magnetic field is the magnetic field of attraction, or in other words, the magnetic field that is formed between two parallel and opposite poles, a north facing a south. In this case, the magnetic field lines are straight lines that are parallel and equally spaced in the area between the parallel poles. Out of this area, lines are curved. Remember that the direction is still from north to south. The area exactly between the poles shown by the red rectangle is a uniform magnetic field. A magnetic field is said to be uniform if number one lines are straight and parallel, number two lines are equally spaced. The third magnetic field to be drawn is that of repulsion, or where two same poles are close to each other. The two poles may be two north poles. And this is how to draw the magnetic field. If two south poles are opposite to each other, the shape will be the same, but the direction will be into the poles, not out of the poles. Again, when you draw the arrows, you must respect that the magnetic flux lines come out of the north and into the south. A summary of shapes of the magnetic field you have just studied. Number one, we studied the magnetic field of a bar magnet. 
the magnetic field of attraction between two opposite poles, and finally the magnetic field of repulsion between two same poles. The properties of magnetic field lines are Magnetic flux is a vector quantity. Lines go from north to south pole. The lines never cross. When the lines are closed, this means strong magnetic field. When the lines are apart, this means weak magnetic field. Magnetic force is strong near the poles and weakens going towards the middle of the magnet. The fourth and final part of the lesson contains three methods of demagnetization. To demagnetize a magnet is to change it back to a normal piece of iron or steel by removing its magnetic property. The first method is hammering. Hammer the magnet strongly several times when it is placed into east-west direction. The second method is by heating until redness. Heat the magnet till redness and allow it to cool in east-west direction. But this may spoil steel. Number 3. Electric AC Demagnetization Place the magnet inside a solenoid where an AC current passes through the solenoid. The solenoid is directed to east-west direction. Pull the magnet slowly to a far distance several meters away from the solenoid. Now the rod is not a magnet anymore. In this lesson, Magnetism, we talked about four titles. Three methods of magnetization, number one, induction, number two, stroking, and number three, magnetization by electric DC current. After that, we discussed three experiments to plot the magnetic field. The first was the iron fillings experiment, and then the more detailed experiment, the compass experiment. After that, the floating magnet experiment. Then we learned how to draw three shapes of magnetic fields. Magnetic field of a normal bar magnet, the magnetic field of attraction between two opposite poles, and the magnetic field of repulsion between two same poles, north and north, or south and south. And at the end we learned 3D magnetization methods. How to remove the magnetic property from a magnet. Number one by hammering, number two by heating, and finally by AC current.